That's why I was asking. Okay, that's fine. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that that mean teacher. <laughs> I, want, I want. I want. I prefer that you all get it versus trying to beat time schedules. I know. You know. Everybody ain't like that. So I'm more about the the quality. I'm what you I'd rather you ask questions. Like the reading. The, what I'm what I'm holding you to is the reading. Now mm -hmm. you, you have to keep up with the reading. But the, the yes. lectures are, you know, like I said, some things are a little bit more technical than others. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's, it took us some time to get through that first chapter. But now we can yeah. kind of, we, we, we can move, we move it now. All right. <laughs> so I got, I got like what, four more weeks to, after this to make y'all some great biblical detectives. So when, mm -hmm. so when so Davenport gets up to preach for the Northeast region, I'm going to hear some exegetical expertise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening right now in Evansville. You're like the third person that they came at me this week. <laughs> and then when Lady Wilkinson get up for the Women of Destiny, I know she about oh. to bring it. I would be sitting up when y'all get it. Look, oh. especially y'all, when y'all get up to preach, you know I'm gonna be in the front row like that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I want. I want to hear it. Hear these. Uh, exegetical sermons mm -hmm. and it's really you know when you get down to it it's not as hard as it seems it's just really talking about what what the intent is you talk about what you see you expound on what you see you give uh you know um direction application after you give interpretation and you take it home <laughs> But we, 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 we'll get to that point. So I'm going to ask. Um, Minister Hudson, would you open up, open us up in prayer? Yes, yes, I will. Good evening again, everyone. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Father, for guiding us through our day. We thank you, God, that you walked it out. And all the crooked places, Father, you made them straight for us. We thank you for your amazing grace, God, that you covered us, Lord God, and you protect our families, Lord God, and our going and our comings, God. Now, Father, as we, Lord God, the students, Lord God, come together, Lord God, under Dr. Lawrence, Lord God, God, open our ears, open our minds, God. Let us be able to, Lord God, comprehend and understand with your wisdom and your knowledge, Father, as he lectures and he teaches us with the understanding, Lord God, of his divine wisdom in you. Father, we ask that you cover us with the blood of your son, Jesus. We ask that, Lord God, that you gather us together and unite us together as one body. We bind up the enemy's hands right now in the name of Jesus, that no weapon he has shall prosper in any form, in any manner in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So amen. tell me about the assignment. It was a lot of praying. <laughs> a lot it of praying? It was a lot of praying and talking, researching. Mm -hmm. Um... Who else? Yeah, she can say that again. It was a lot of praying. Yes, Lord. It was hard. Yes. <laughs> it was research. I had to research. I had to, I had to, um, and reading. I had to read more. Yes. But overall, overall, I had no idea what I was doing. But in the ending, it came together, I think. Yeah. 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 What about, what you about? You have to my... break down the. Huh? Oh, go ahead. You had to break down. I what? Say, I, 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 I had to break down uh, the liberationists. I had to uh, uh, go into the internet to really see what what type of a, a, a mindset that they had, and uh, also with the feminists, mm -hmm. you you had to you know had to go into the internet and find out as well as how they truly you know how they thought. You know, mm -hmm. so I had to get, I had to kind of get their thinking before I could really put something down on paper. Who else? Who else? That's good. I agree. 
I agree. Yeah, I didn't. I had to read. I didn't really go that deep. I just um, wanted to find out where SMAS came from and found out that there's so we are today. And, um, and they were racial profiled also and mm -hmm. because they were like mixed a mixed race of people and so that's what they were looked down upon and I can, I started to look at it from that point of view from where the woman was that you know like she was uh well, that's why she she talked back to Jesus like she did you know you, you Jews don't have nothing to do with us Samaritans you know so why are you asking me for what right. you know so I just looked at it from that point the, the the um the racial aspect of it and how she was treated because of the because she was born a Samaritan. Anybody else? How about my fellas? Well, I know Overseer Rick said he came to uh, some new revelations. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Is it my thing acting up, or that's a, that's a, something is I it's um like some kind uh, of tone? No, he didn't say anything yet. No, <laughs> I I I had I had no idea. I had no idea what to. Uh, <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> you gotta look at it from a, a from a I'm woman's standpoint. Honest. You know, you gotta look at it. You gotta look at it. So you know, if you're gonna do research you got to be able to look at things from different perspectives mm -hmm. that's the key you know it's it's, it's really it's it's not it's not easy because like i told you before we're all used to looking at the bible as disciples mm -hmm. so keep on working at it chris keep on working at it right. how about you lady wilkinson for me it's like for me it was also kind of difficult even though i'm a woman but uh, I just had to put myself in her shoes because, um, you know, being a woman in that time, um, I know the things that I've been through in my life. So I just kind of had to take that in from a perspective of, you know, what has this woman went through before she got to the well? You know, what, mm -hmm. what was she thinking when Jesus approached her, like, as far as being worthy and you know, uh, the the issues that she may have had in, in her life. So I just kind of looked at it from that perspective and, and the fact that she had an opportunity to meet with Jesus and be freed and delivered in that, in that era, in her time, mm -hmm. when a lot of women, you know, weren't really looked at uh, the way that they are now. Right. Anybody else? All right. Was that worth your time? Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was because it, it, it really made you it really made you dig into what their mindset was, just like with the liberals, you know, the liberationists. You know, um when I found scripture based on what they thought Jesus came to do, and whereas you know, when it says we Jesus came to uh to give peace, you know, to bring us peace. Well, they were more thinking he came to uh, bring a sword. He was really coming to fight. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and so um, it, it was, it was just, it was just, um, it was really awesome to be able right. to see the mindset of somebody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can do that at multiple places in the Bible. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. So don't stop there. Just uh -huh. keep, keep keep looking at the biblical text from different perspectives. Yeah. And you'll be able to see it, you know, in your studying, in, in your in your uh analysis of the text. Uh-huh. So or today we're gonna move forward. I, I tell you, we get to the fun stuff now. You you all got got a little bit of got a little taste of stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna talk about the text. And the in the text chapter is pretty straightforward. Um, we must consider mm -hmm. a biblical text 
that will be the subject of our exegesis. Mm -hmm. We all agree that. Mm -hmm. um, in the book, it talks about you know how to choose a text. Um, many of us, and there are different ways that you can choose a text. If you're a pastor, you, you know you choose it based off the which way the Lord leads you. Some pastors have lectionaries, and they choose the passages out of the lectionary. If you're a student, you may be assigned passages just to read. And if you're just curious, you may just be looking on your own. <clears throat> so when you choose it, you, you choose it for different reasons. Oh, let me get back up here. Uh, okay. Okay. When we get, when we choose a text, <clears throat> exegetes should be prepared to live with their text for some period of time. So this is not a quick, as you all saw, this was not a quick process. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's not, you know, it, it probably shines a different light on you uh, when you think about Bible study and actually sitting there exegeting this text. Is it a little bit different now? Yes. Yes. Sometimes Bible study can be a little surfacey, if that's the word. You're just uh -huh. kind of skimming over the surface, but what you want to do is like you want to, you want to you want you first you want to get in the kiddie pool, mm -hmm. and once you master the kiddie pool, then you launch out in the deep. Because mm -hmm. if you know anything about being in shallow water, shallow mm -hmm. water is where the little fish are. Mm -hmm. You go out yes. to the deep, that's where the big fish are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to ask yourself: Is this text in which? I want to invest a significant amount of time. This is a text that I want to invest my time and energy in. Mm -hmm. As a pastor, you have no choice. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. Like this week, I, you know, I've pretty much done the research. I'll be dealing with giving. <laughs> and so that so you have to you have to kind of break that, break that down. You have to ask yourself, am I interested in what others have to say about the text? Because a lot of you say you had to look at sources. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's see, let's see going back out a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Keep splitting. So there we go. Oh, why is it? Okay, this is this is getting a little nerve wracking here. Y'all see that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see yeah. it. See it. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It keeps it, it keeps jumping on me. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to. Um, Reverend Moses. Moses. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm finally gotten on there. But I had an aspect on the uh, woman at the well. Okay, Let's, uh, let me hear it. My aspect was the thirst um, aspect of the fact that um, Jesus must, he had needs to go to Samaria. Okay. So that's where I was thinking. Um, okay. So being thirsty. So mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it in there. And the beauty of this is everybody, every no one is going to see the same thing you saw. Yes. I haven't got a chance. To, this week has been busy. I haven't got a chance to go through the papers yet, but I'm guaranteeing that nobody hit the same thing. Right. That's the beauty of it. Because like, let's just like we're talking about here, we have to identify the text as a unit. Mm -hmm. At least as important as the question of length is the matter of beginning and ending. So when you choose a passage to exegete, there should be a beginning and an ending. We understand that. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it's, you know, it, it, it varies in length. A passage of scripture that it, a passage of scripture that is to be the subject of the exegetical study should be a well-defined textual unit. That is, it will have clear a clear beginning, a clear end. And it will be a coherent, cohesive, communicative entity. So something is being communicated in this text. Yes, yes. And the beauty of the Bible is that God, every word is important. So you can find meaning. You can find, you can be able to preach 
Jesus wept. Yes. <clears throat> and I challenge you, I haven't I have not done it yet. For the preachers out there, eventually try to preach from Obadiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. Textual units are of varying lengths. From, a, from an entire book to a chapter to a paragraph to a sentence. Understand that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we get so we can look at all of Genesis. We can look at chapters in Genesis. We can look at paragraphs. We can look at sentences or a verse. Yes. It must first be remembered that almost every text appears within a larger text so that it is not really an entity unto itself. And many times we have to look at the text that we choose in the proper context. That means we have to understand what comes before and what comes after. Yes. Right, okay. 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 A text, it is like a Russian doll with texts of decreasing length nested inside another. Nonetheless, one of the basic units of human thought and for expression seems to be something like a paragraph or stanza. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, this, is, this is really messy, okay. For most exegetical work, especially students just learning to do exegesis, something like a paragraph or a stanza is, is appropriate. So I don't want anybody trying to break off, you know, a book. You will be working for days trying to do your book, doing a book. Mm. Let's start with a stanza mm. or something that's, you know, something that's bite-sized. These units, as well as longer units of thought ex and expression, uh, consisting of paragraphs and stanza linked together, often begin and end with markers that indicate a difference or shift from what precedes and what follows. Like I said, you have to be aware of what comes before and what comes after. So as we discussed before, and we'll talk about it a little bit more tonight, you have to be willing to read. You all learned that in your assignments. You had to read, 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 and probably yeah. read some more. Yep. Yes, yes. If a textual unit has a clear beginning and end, then it has limits or boundaries. Exegetes <laughs> should learn to look for indications of the beginning and end of units of thought and expression in the Bible. What this truly means is that as you read, and I think we discussed it in class one, you have to have your thinking caps on. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now that we're going to get to that a little bit more tonight, but you, I, I recommend that you record what you read. Mm -hmm. They should choose a, choose a text that has a clear start, finish, and communicate the coherent sequence of thoughts or actions. Select passage of select a passage for exegesis that interests you, and that is a complete textual communicative unit of imaginable size with a clear beginning and end. So, therefore, again, we need as we begin, we want to choose passages with a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. Such as like the passage that the, we talked about Jairus's daughter. It has a beginning. It has a end. End. Mm -hmm. There are various ways that a distinct textual unit may be may be, may be signaled, such as shifts from the content, from the text surrounding context, change in narrative settings or characters, thematic aspects of the text, including the repetition of keywords or images. Structural features such as inclusion and, and chiasmus, the temporal and logical markers. Every translation is an interpretation, a kind of streamlined exegesis. So we already discussed this, that every translation that we have is somebody else's interpretation of what the original Bible said. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Every trans. Right. It's a translation. Mm-hmm. We are not using 
the original form of the Bible. Mm -hmm. The task of translation is rendered difficult by several complicating features of language, including the sense of lexical items, various aspects of context, and differences between the source and the target languages, because we do not, many of us don't know the original language. The two basic approaches to translation are formal equivalence and functional equivalence. Students who do not read the original language should, be an, should use an excellent version, preferably a larger form equivalence translation such as NRSV, NABRE, RNJB, or NIB as the basis for your exegetical work. I don't know why the thing is jumping like this. Mm. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the pages version. I'm not gonna do that. That's better. Yeah. That's better. That's better for me. It's not doing all that jumping. Right. I can make it bigger. I can make it bigger. Yes. Um, put on the switch. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see that? No, can I make it bigger? Yes. You can't now, see I can, this? now I can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some other translation may be used for exegesis with some caution, including NET, RSV, ESV, NASV, and CSV, while certain other translations may provide interpretive options and insights. Various books, software packages, websites, and apps contain multiple translations. Study Bibles are available too, through, though none is without limitations. So we understand that. Let me see what's going on with my dog real quick. I think when somebody's coming into my house, I mean, when the kids. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. The kids order pizza. <laughs> Practical hints. Treat all translations, even the best, as careful research options, not the final truth. We talked about that, right? Yes. <laughs> if you don't read the original language, use a formal equivalence translation. We talked about that. And the basis for your exegesis, use other versions to supply possible translations or interpretations of various components of the passage. And any and all which must be confirmed by careful exegesis. So no matter what translation you use, you must do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you all have a do you all have a good study Bible? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Make sure you have a good study Bible. And remember, even the notes in your study Bible are written by men. They're subject to error. Mm -hmm. So, and I and what I would recommend is that you do your work first mm -hmm. and see what God is speaking to you through the text, through mm -hmm. your ob observation mm -hmm. and, of the text, your mm -hmm. interpretation, and then see how it lines up with the commentators. Don't mm -hmm. don't be people that run to the comment commentaries first. Amen. Mm -hmm. Running to the commentaries first is lazy. Mm -hmm. Will we agree? Yeah. Amen. And, Amen. and what it does, it cheats you 
mm-hmm. of the find. It cheats you out of that aha moment. Yeah. I usually read and then I walk away. I read a couple of times and I walk away. Mm-hmm. And then I, I just allow the Lord to speak to me and what I just read. And then I then I will go back and then I will look at the commentary. But I first let it settle in my spirit and then I go back. Because let, let me let me let me let me explain something to you. This comes from um, experience. When you start to do exegesis, you'll start looking at the the grammar in the Greek and the Hebrew. Uh-huh. And what you'll find is that there are many um, uses for maybe one word. Yes, it may mean a few things. We I think we talked about the love love situation earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what you'll have is you'll have commentators who are trying to prove a point. And sometimes mm. everybody is going right, but you'll have that one commentator that'll go left. Mm. And with diligent Bible study, you'll understand when that's happening. Mm. But you have to do your due diligence first. Mm-hmm. So always make sure, don't, don't be, and we're going to get into this is kind of a little bit of the technical part. We're going to get into some fun stuff that really, that's really going to help you. For further insight and practice, choose two favorite Bible passages to read them in at least three different translations. What differences do you notice among those translations? Are the differences significant? Does the tone or thrust of either passage differ in your estimation from, trans, from translation to translation? Compare the treatment of the two passages just selected. See point one from above in two different study Bibles and record your observations about the differences in interpretation. Review the techniques below. This is where it's going to get fun. Y'all ready? Yeah. We got to so do the other this. page. Huh? We have to do the other page for homework? Um, that's just for your practice. Oh, okay. Okay. So the key to getting this party started is to read, record, and reflect. Yes. Mm-hmm. Write that down. Say, say it to yourself. Say, I got to read, read, record, record, and reflect. And reflect. We all know what reading is. Yeah. In order to study Bible, in order to study the Bible, you actually have to read. Yes, you have yeah. to be able to engage the biblical text. You have mm-hmm. to read and not browse. Mm-hmm. You can't exegete the text if you don't know the text. Right. And, and, I, and I put a note here. Many folks turn the pages of their Bible like they flip the channels on their TV. Because mm-hmm. some folks will say, you know, I got I got the Bible and I just let it fall open and the Lord just bless, bless, bless me. <laughs> That's a mess. <laughs> we'll keep it real we live in, living in some times where, where we living in times now but going like this is like okay that's not going to do it Okay. you have to have some diligent bible study you have to spend some time with the biblical text you have to read the text and not browse it mm-hmm. yes. like I said many times let me do this over Many times, people are just looking for something to catch their interest. Unfortunately, you cannot find success in this approach. How many of you have found success doing that? Stop it. No. Bible study requires a conscious, concentrated effort. Yes, it does. If you're going to exegete the text, you have to have a conscious, concentrated effort. Read portions of the Bible over and over so you can get them in your spirit. Yes. yes. We talked about this. Read it in different translations. The more you read the biblical text, the clearer it will become. I guarantee you, the people that that, that, that truly dug into the woman at the well can still see the image in their mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Learn to read. Like I said, this is the fun part. If you're gonna, you must learn how to read. If we we must know what to look for when we're reading. 
Mm-hmm. We must learn how to read, and we must know what we're looking for. It's like if you go outside. If you walk, if you walk outside, you see it's so much that you see. Mm-hmm. When you step into the biblical text, I think Lady Wilkinson says she had to put herself in the place of the woman at the well. When you put yourself in the place of the woman at the well, what are you seeing? You have to be able to actualize what's on paper. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 Our culture has made a radical shift in the last century from a word-based society of readers to an image-based society of viewers. Everybody wants to be on Facebook. Everybody wants to be on Instagram. Everybody wants to be on TikTok. But nobody wants to sit down and do the work that they're supposed to do, even in the church. We got, I mean, I know we got prophets and all that stuff online, but some folks just want to prophesy all the time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, okay, it's okay to prophesy, but you got to be able to dig in that word. Mm-hmm. That's right. We have to recapture the skill of reading if we want to become effective Bible students. If you don't understand what you're reading, you're not reading. You're wasting your time. Yes. Too many people come away from the Bible having basically wasted their time because of their life depended on it. They could not tell you what they were reading. So here's some things. I'm not going to go through them all. I'm going to leave some of these for you all to dig into. Learn to read better and faster. Learn to read for the first time. I'm going to talk about this. We need to come to every text like we've never seen it before. And you, I know many folks say it's hard, but this is a discipline that you have to master. It, imbi- it, it involves cultivating a mindset and attitude towards the word. We talked about this before, but one thing that helps is reading the Bible in different versions. If you've been reading the same version for years, Try something fresh and contemporary for a change. So what I'm saying is, if many of you have your study Bibles, maybe it's time to change. Mm-hmm. Amen? Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 Which one am I getting? Amen. Amen. Because <laughs> yeah. my father always said, if you don't agree with the pastor, you can always say, nay, man. Uh, but you know, maybe. Go ahead. I, I usually, you know, I, I, I use my, uh, my my study Bibles. I actually have two. Then what I did when I was um, having to uh, read the, uh, and study the woman at the well, well, I had to go and uh, pull out another Bible that I had called the uh, Smith's Bible Dictionary because um, I needed to, I, I, I needed to find out uh, more about Samaria and I needed to find out more about the women. Mm, that's good work right there. Yeah. yeah. So, so. I, so, so that's what I did. I went and dug it out and I'm like, cause just like the Holy Ghost said, go get your Smith Bible. And I hadn't pulled it out in a few years. So I went and pulled it out and then that's when I found some different things about uh, what, what, what they were saying about the women as well as the, uh, the city of Samaria. So, I, so I'm using this now. So you're agreeing with me that we have to be able to read. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you, you have to. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Lady Wilkinson, were you saying something? OK, OK. What, like I said, we talk about reading different versions. And, that we, and it, it just, in the notes, it gives different versions. But do whatever it takes to approach the word with a fresh perspective. Always mm-hmm. strive to have a fresh perspective. And, re- and when I talk about this now, and I, we're going to exegete texts. We have to approach them from the standpoint of the people in the text. They are real people. They're mm-hmm. not. Uh, they're not actors. They're not just fictional characters. They're people like you and me. They had real, real dreams, real hopes, real problems. They had issues. You have to understand that they were real people. And I know we, like I said, we all, we already know that we have, you know, we, that we, we take it to the cross when we preach and everything. We talk about the cross, but the woman at the well didn't know nothing about the cross. Yeah. No. No. But so we have to did. understand, uh, pardon me? 
Mm -hmm. I said she didn't know that the Messiah was coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Jesus revealed that he was, I am he. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So read the Bible as a love letter. If you want to understand the Bible, you have to learn to read better and faster and for the first time. And if, as if you were reading a love letter, just think of it. God wanted to communicate with you in the 21st century, and he wrote his message in a book. Mm -hmm. Strategies, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm not going to go through all of these. The strategies are here for you to go through, but read thoughtfully. And it says here, when you talk about reading thoughtfully, the Bible must be read to be what? Understood. Understood, yes. And you have to think when you read. You understand that? You got to think. You can't put your mind in neutral. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, many, and many times, that's what we do. Because mm -hmm. if you like me, like if I'm reading something, if I'm reading something carnal, like so I love comic book stuff, I'm reading about the new Marvel movie or this or that, I'm, I'm, I'm tuned in. Mm -hmm. I'm tuned in. I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. And sometimes I get ready to read the word. I'd be like, oh, mm -hmm. need a nap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can't, and I can't. And it's easy to put your mind in neutral when you're reading, but you have to be engaged as you read. You cannot, there's no way you can exegete a text if your mind is not engaged. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned, you know, I, I'm a fast paced guy. I have to learn to slow myself down. For those who heard me preach, I slow myself down. And I take it slow, like a slow dance. You just take it slow. Sometimes we have to take the Bible slow, but we have to read thoughtfully. But not only must we read thought thoughtfully, we must read it over and over. We must read repetitively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let me let's see if I'll do this here. Try to read the entire book in a sitting if you can. I, I, I don't like doing that. Mm -mm. I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna keep it real. You don't, but started you don't started, huh? You don't get nothing out of children. Well, you know, I I, think, I, I will. I, I won't read it in one sitting. I don't have mm -hmm. that patience. I'm just gonna keep it real. I don't have that patience. Mm -hmm. But we can read the book <laughs> from beginning to end, mm -hmm. starting with the beginning and getting to the end. We just yeah. have to be disciplined. But you know, I know, I know, uh, Lady Wilkinson. I know uh, my brother sends her love letters all the time, mm -hmm. and so I know that she don't get the love letters from Overseer Wilkinson and start reading them in the middle. <laughs> she want to hear the. She want to hear from the beginning to the end. She want to hear all those sweet things he got to say to her from the beginning of the love letter to the end. So she, it doesn't make any sense for her to start the love letters three quarters of the way in. Mm -hmm. But that's how we do the letters that we read in the Bible. Mm -hmm. We'll turn to, we're we going to start with chapter eight. Why you start with chapter eight? That's not the beginning. That's not putting it in its proper context. Like I said, we, you know, even myself, I have to discipline myself because sometimes when I'm preaching, I got to get, I want to get to the meat of it. Because I got a lot of stuff to do, but you have to take your time and engage the text. Try to read an entire book in one sitting. I'm not going to do that, though. Start at the, maybe, maybe, maybe I read Jude. I, I can do Jude. I can do Jude. Jude is one chapter. I can do that one in one chapter. sitting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can do Jude. Start from the beginning of the book. We talked mm -hmm. about reading the book in the Bible in different translations. Listen, how, how have you been at listening to the Bible? Mm. Yes. I do that sometimes when I'm at work. I'm okay, with okay. but also too, Lady Wilkinson. One of the things that I do and sit here when I can't get focused like I want to, I read it out loud to myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because when I read it out loud, um, Prophet is diving for it. It engages all of my senses. Mm -hmm. And so if I really, really, really want to get it in my spirit, I'll read it about five to six times out loud. And how do I, I'm going to tell you how I learned that. And then when I was in sixth grade, 
you know, we got punishments in the class, you know, or we had punishment, we had to write stuff out, we had to write paragraphs. And if we messed up on a test, we had to write out our definition. <laughs> and I learned that if you write out your definitions, you learn them better. Mm -hmm. If you read things out loud, like if you have a small scripture, uh, mm -hmm. like, a, like, a, like a verse or two, if you read them out loud and write them five times, then mm -hmm. paraphrase them five times, you got it. And what you want to do, this is this this is me as a preacher. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is have it so much in your spirit that even if you got notes on the paper, God can bring stuff to your remembrance because you got it inside of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, too, as people who exegete the text, you want to be accurate and you want the people people to understand what you are talking about. Right. You want to be a reliable source when it comes to what you have dug out of the word. Mm. There's a little exercise here. You can take it, you can take a take a look at that. Mm. Read the Bible patiently. I think we talked about this before. Be patient with the text. Mm. This is not a marathon. I mean, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Take your time. Be patient with yourself. Calm yourself. Prepare your mind with prayer. Don't rush to read. Reread it over and over if you need to. Mm -hmm. remember, remember this, remember this, remember this. When you're exegeting the text, remember that somebody counting on you to exegete it correctly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If somebody counting on you to be diligent at what you said you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So take your time. Mm -hmm. I also say read selectively. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask the text questions. Who, what, where, when, how, and wherefore. Ask what difference will it make if I apply this truth? Mm -hmm. Read prayerfully. We all know that. Yeah. Read the Bible yeah. imaginatively. Mm -hmm. In your own words, what does it what does it mean to read using your imagination? Don't put your you know, we, we all got vivid imaginations when it comes to stuff. Don't throw your imagination out when it comes to Bible study. Mm -hmm. Can I say something? Yes, go ahead. When I was reading uh the woman at the well with the <laughs> feminist perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, be, be, before she before she recognized or she um, found out who he was as the Messiah, then you had to go back and, and remember what she thought about before, she, you know, what before she knew he, who he was. Mm -hmm. So what was her mindset before? <clears throat> She found out he was the Messiah. See, she knew she, she knew he would come. She knew he would come, but she didn't know that he was there. That's who, 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 he, who she was talking to. So it, when it, you look, is isn't that a lot like us? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. See, because people, because people are talk to us before they find out that we are pastors and preachers and prophetess and things of you know that nature they'll talk to us a whole nother way before you know they, before they find out who we are mm -hmm. yeah right mm -hmm. so but th but think about think, let, let's let's make it a little bit personal look at uh -huh. how we acted look how we acted before we know who he was mm -hmm. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, and I, I, I i keep it real with everybody no, we yeah. all, we all, he all had to, okay, it's, it's, how many, wait a minute, let me look, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, let me see, it's, it's 13 of us online, Chris is on twice, so it's 12 of us online, all 12 <laughs> of us, God had to come get us. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. he did. Run me down. He did. Yeah, yes. he, he had to yeah. come get us, yep. you know why? Because we was having such a good time. Yeah. <laughs> Running. Yeah, L listen, this is Trey, this is Minister, Minister King, this is Minister King, I, you, you are absolutely right, he had to come get us, and guess what, he went to that well specifically, to get, get up, for, 
yes, sir. together. And, yeah. and, and and please understand, she was she was considered dirty because you know the Jews didn't didn't mingle with the Samaritans, and right. so so you know she she wasn't even expecting it. But he came specifically for her, and I and I when I think about myself, yeah, what I was what I was doing, I wasn't thinking about him looking for him. I could listen, and he came and sought me out. He came right into my situation, Preach my King. filth and my issues. He yes. walked into my filthiness and yeah. came to see about me. Yeah, and, and, and I, I'm trying to tell you. So, uh, y- listen, I, I, y'all, I mainly had to come off mute, but I'm just saying, <laughs> Prince King. I mean, we'll come to, and find rescue. you. So when I had to, to put rescue. myself in her shoes, when I had to put myself in her shoes, <laughs> I, I thought about how he, when he came and found me, where yeah. I was. Yes. And that thing, that story really blesses me to another level when I put myself at the well. Yeah. yeah. That's where oh I my would, God. That's yeah. where uh, I yeah. Yeah. And, 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 that, and that's what and that's what, and, that, and, that, and that's a prime example of reading the Bible imaginatively. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it bring it, it, it not because now it's not a story. Mm-hmm. Or it's it's something that you've experienced, yeah. and technically we've all experienced it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because just like she said, he came and got all twelve of us in mm-hmm. our field. That's what, mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Why would he go into that well and specifically speak to a Samaritan woman? Mm-hmm. So he specifically picked us all out. That's why I say about the thirst. He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. And I just know that there was a thirst there. You know what I mean? Why would he, he was going, to, they were going to get something to eat. He was hungry, but mm-hmm. more hungry to win a soul than he was to win. To hey, get some- hey, yes. yes. I just hey, have now. So you, are, so you all grasp the fact of reading the imaginative. I don't have to teach that. But I don't have to stay there too long. Yes. Y'all got that. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. But not only, you know, we, we talk about what um Mr. King said about re, you know, her about her using it. Now you gotta meditate on that. Mm. See, a lot, a lot of times we read our word. Mm-hmm. We read I got enough, you can't see it here. We read the word, you put it down, we go on to do something else. We mm. don't take time to meditate. And I think we talked about this on the first night. That's We're true. supposed to meditate two times. I write. I, you read it, but I take and I write it word for word. That's how I do it. I have to write it down because if not, I'll lose it. So I write right. it the first time coming, going through it. But you have to meditate it on day. We want to meditate on the word day Daily. and night. Day and night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have to learn. I want to say this slowly. To take some time and reflect on the word of God. It says here, we live in a society that we want it yesterday. Yeah. And we want it the way we, 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 want, we want it like Burger King. We want it our way. <laughs> As a result of this, meditating on the Bible has fallen by the wayside. Amen. Amen. <laughs> It says here, and I, 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 it says there's an old hymn that says, "Take time to be holy." Time is exactly what it takes to become what holy. Mm-hmm. We can't become holy in a hurry. Yet we live in a society where we want things yesterday and we want it our way. We live in an instant society that is in a distracted society. Yes, we. We've got so much stuff coming at us from TV, cell phones, email, social media. We barely have time to react, never mind reflect. That's why scripture speaks so frequently frequently about meditation. Understand that time is exactly what it takes to become holy. We can't become holy in a hurry. That is why meditation is needed. Any questions about that? A meditation? 
No. Nope. Must read purposefully. Purposeful reading looks for the aim of the author. I think we all talked about that. We, we all did that with the assignment. You had to look for the aim of the author. What is the reason that the author is writing this? And I think we looked at that when we looked at the study Bible and we, we engaged the beginning of the study Bible to understand the flow of the book. So if you have a good study Bible, you look and you, you look to see what the flow of it is. And if you have any questions, you double check it. You have to double or triple check the information that you get because the information is from man. There's not a verse of scripture that was penned by accident. Every word contributes meaning. Our challenge as challenge as readers is to discern that meaning. Meaning. How you do that? One of the keys to determining purpose is to look for structure. Every book of the Bible has both grammatical and literary structure, which we talked about, right? Yes. You see how things are coming back? Yeah. Grammatical structure, verbs, subjects and objects, modifiers, prepositional phrases, connectives, literary structure, biographical, geographical, historical, chronological, ideology, ide ide ideological. Are there any questions about that? It's a lot. It's a lot. That, that's why I gave you notes. That's why I gave you notes. <laughs> <clears throat> and we're not, like I said, we're not going to get close to the end, but you have the material to help you become stronger. Right, right. Read acquisitively. This means not only read, read it, but to retain it. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not merely to perceive it but to possess it mm -hmm. take hold of the biblical text and make it your own property spend some time with it the key is personal but active involvement in the process you have to be involved in what you are doing there's an old proverb to that effect I hear and I forget I see and I remember I do and I understand Oh. Remember, we only we, we remember only 10% of what we hear, 50% of what we see, 90% of what we see, hear, and do. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? Retain it. Grab hold of it. And that, and, that, and that may mean you spend some quality time. You, that's, you spend some quality time with that text. I mean, you're not gonna win no badges of honor coming back here telling us you you read all of all the Psalms last week. Do you know what all the Psalms means? <laughs> but if you come back and say, you know, I read Psalm one verses one through five. I started two weeks ago, and I'm getting a better understanding. That's where it's at. So now you can articulate what Psalm one verses one through five truly means in the proper context. Read telescopically. Telescopic reading means viewing all parts in light of the whole. Let me tell you something. Most of the time, when we exegete the text, we take it apart. Would you all agree? Yeah. Yes. The key is not only to take it apart, but mm -hmm. to put it back together. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. every time we read and analyze scripture, every time we take it apart, realize that we've only done a part of the task. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. We yes. must put it back together again. Yes. How do we do that? Yes. Look for connectives. Pay attention to the context. What is the big picture? Mm -hmm. Evaluate the passage in light of the book as a whole. That means you may have to read the whole book. Then come back to your passage. That's Dr. Taylor. 
look at the historical context of the book. Let me let her know I'm teaching the class. Hold on. <laughs> Okay. Exercise. Here we go to the book of Jude. Read the book of Jude. Start by reading it systematically, not analytically. That is, survey the entire book before you dig any holes. Get an overview of what Jude covers and especially how much space he devotes to each subject. Next, move to Philemon, if time permits, and then the exercise in your reading on all, and then the exercise in your reading on all of Jude. So we talked about reading. Any questions about reading? Okay. We must record. Remember, we're reading, recording, and and reflecting. Write notes. Write down what you see in the text. Keep a record of insights and questions. You cannot build on something you do not have. Start where you are, even with elementary things. Everyone starts at the same place, but make sure you write things down. Use something to record what you see. In your own words, summarize what you see in the text. So later, these thoughts will come back to you and you will have a reference. Doing this will keep you, doing this will keep you, help you remember what you have discovered. Focus, yes. Any questions on that? Nope. No. So if you don't have a notebook, guess what? Get one. Get one. Reflect. <laughs> Take some time to think about what you have seen in the text. What is going on in the passage? What is the passage telling me about God? What is the passage telling me about myself? What do I need to do on the basis of what I am reading here? Reflection or meditation is vital to understanding God's word. <clears throat> Any questions? None? Nope. No with nope. you. So let's look at Jude. You want us to get our Bibles to look at Jude? No, I'm gonna put it you on the screen. To, you just oh okay. I'm put it on the screen. I'm, I'm getting it. Okay. And, and is this wanna... exercise, is this uh is this homework for us? Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me start writing. <laughs> homework. I want you to read. Mm -hmm. Record Beach. and reflect. Beat, record and reflect. The whole chapter. It's, it's one book. This is this is a book right here. Yes, there's only one book. But it's a long, it's a long book. It is a long book. Twenty-five verses. Yes, you know what I'm talking right. about. There's a yes. lot in that book. Mm -hmm. A lot in it. <laughs> Okay, let, me, let me pull this over here. So true. Um, Reverend, could you make that um, larger? Hold on, give me a second. Okay. The, the exercise is this. But I have my Bible. Okay, if you have your Bible, grab your Bible. Read the book of Jude. Mm -hmm. 
Start by reading it systematically, not analytically. That means survey the entire book before you dig any holes. So I would say, read the book five times. Mm. Mm. Five times? Before, yeah, don't, 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 don't get any sermons in your, in your mind. Read it systematically. Mm -hmm. okay, five, times. five times. Get an overview of what Jew covers and especially how much space he devotes to each subject. Okay. Get an overview. And how much time? Mm -hmm. I want you to read. Mm -hmm. record and reflect mm -hmm. so don't write nothing we don't have to write nothing you gotta record, okay. record. <laughs> read <laughs> record okay. and reflect <laughs> Lord have mercy 25 pages okay I'm objective. I can do it. I can do it. I can do all things through Christ. So, so over here, are we recording us reading or record us what we're what we're um the um illumination of what we're getting? Yeah, the illumination, what you're getting. Okay. Write it down. So we're writing down. What are we writing down again? We, we, okay, it's in your notes. It said record. <laughs> Write <Lord>. notes. <laughs> Write down what you see in the text. Okay. Keep an insight of record. Uh, keep a record of insights and questions, mm -hmm. because you cannot build on something you don't have. Mm -hmm. If you okay. even if you start with the elementary things, start with the elementary things. Record what you see. Record what I see. Okay, record what I yeah. see. It's right. It's right there in the record section on your notes. Page thirteen. Mm -hmm. And once you do that. Once you have that, then I want you to marinate on it. What Martin say, just let it marinate. I got it. I'm driving, but I got it. I got okay. It. And then I don't want you to send it to me. Okay. We're going to talk about what you found next week. Okay. Awesome. That's good. Awesome. Thank you. Well, okay. you take, you take, you take that. You take your time. Yeah. So I'm telling you a minimum of five times. Okay. But I want you to let it sink in. Use the different translations. Try some different ones. Mm -hmm. Then this is this is what I, 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 I thank you, Holy Ghost. Then once you re-record and reflect, I want you to see how you stack up against the commentator. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you tell us next week how what you found in the text mm -hmm. compares to the commentator that you have. Mm -hmm. Is it close? Is it the same? Are you in the same ballpark? Are they out of the ballpark? Christian, because you're on twice, you got to do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm logging off now. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at it, you'll see, you know, you just take it slow. But I want you to read through it. Don't try to analyze it first. Okay. Just get it in your spirit. Get it in your spirit. Get it in your spirit. And maybe one of those times I want you to read it aloud. So, Reverend, you want us to read it? Should we? Okay, I know you said read it in different versions. So, should we do like like three, to, or you want five different versions? What do you think? Or give me three. Or, give me three. Okay. Twice in each version. Read it twice in each version. Okay. But that's a minimum. Got gotcha. you. Okay. If you feel like you need more, 
Like you might say, you know, I'm, I, you know, I read it six times, but I'm gonna keep on reading it. I might read it, you know, my, I still might be recording, but I'm gonna still read. So you might still do it a couple of times. Okay, I see this, but I guarantee the more you read, the more you see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Is, is this helping you all grow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, so when I so when I hear all y'all sermons, I'm gonna be hearing. I'm gonna see some 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 observation. I'm gonna see some colorful sermons. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. And what and, and what I wanted to do. The reason why I'm doing it this way with you all is because I know this could be a technical subject matter, but I want to kind of make it fun and easy to grasp. So if you grasp the concepts that we grasp, the three points that we talked about tonight, and I'm going to leave us there, read, record, and reflect when it comes to the text. Reading is three-fourths of your battle. Right. So everybody got it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to read through the papers. Mm -hmm. So, Minister King, you good? Mm -hmm. She was preaching tonight. <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> oh, yeah, you were preaching tonight. I'm going to put your cash out uh, uh, in the chat. <laughs> no, man of God, this this is good. I, I have to tell you, this is good stuff. I I am just truly, truly basking in what um God is using you to give to us. It truly is. I, I believe that it is just going to truly enhance the gifting. And I just bless God for this class. I really do. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. It's going to connect with your singing. Yes. Oh my God. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I feel that. I, I feel that now. I'm I was I'm almost home and all I keep thinking is I'm gonna get these kids to sleep and I'm going straight into Jude. And I'm just, you know, um and as far as even in my praise and worship, I mean, you know, my leading the, you know, being a worship leader, my God, I'm just looking for you know to what god is going to do how he's going to um breathe on it and anoint it even deeper it's just it's good i'm excited amen 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 i'm excited too I can. <laughs> anybody else any got any, any concerns or i know we went a little long last week i'm gonna let y'all go a little early this week and we do have to make up a class so we got to figure out when we want to do that So we got to figure that out. Let's figure, let me know about that next week, how we got to, how we can make up a class. But um, any questions? So the, so the assignment is simple. Read, record, and reflect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All hearts and mind clear? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to find. I know you sent it to me, um, the assignment from last week. Um, did you send that to me in an email or a text? You sent me the the, the class. Basically, what we did was this: we uh, you had the notes from the class, and I, I think I sent you the link from the class. Yeah, I think. You um, basically, we we looked at the woman at the well from a feminist exegetical perspective. Not a womanist, but a feminist from straight, just women, not women of color. Okay. And so you have to look at that from how it brings liberation to women. Okay. Because wow. feminist exegesis is linked to liberation exegesis. Okay. If, you got any, if, you got, if you got any questions, give me a buzz. Okay. What is your number? Um, Gosh, you, no, you need. Uh, okay, I will give it to you. It's 219-888-888-8280. Thank you. And I text all of you all today. You all should have it. I, I, did, I couldn't find it. 
Are you on the text? <clears throat> okay. See, I got all of you all in one text. <clears throat> you should. You, you. Are you in here? You should have got it. Me? No, let's do, Yeah, everybody. I think everybody's on here. I put y'all on my special church app so I can just send y'all one message at one time. Hmm. Okay. Anybody got any questions? Mm -hmm. no. Everybody <laughs> ready, ready to relax for the week? Yes. <laughs> I know I am. I'm tired. But is this is is this worth your time? Yes, yes. it is. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Let me see if there's anything else I want you all to have. What I really just try to do is when I speak, I want to be able to people understand what I'm saying. Right. And I really understand. What <laughs> okay. Also, too, I want you to look at when you're looking at the text, when you're doing your um. Maybe I just I want to know if I should send this in one page just so you all have it. Hold on, I'm gonna send this in one page for you guys. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I think I gave it to you before, but I want to give it to you. Mm -hmm. You send an email or text? How do you all want it now? Mm -hmm. Email. Email so I can print okay. it. Okay, give me a second. Yeah, a second. email. email. So, I can, so we can print it, right? You can print it, yeah. I get email. Okay. Keep this for your reference. It's in your notes too, but this is a separate sheet. Let me know if y'all got that. Okay. It's on this way. I have it. Okay, it just came to my phone too. Okay. I got it, I got it, yes. Everybody got it? Yes, I have it. I do too. It says Revenant and Hope. That's right. Revenant and Hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's not it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Observing the passage. Yeah. But no, it said, it said the, the, the capture said Revenant and Hope at first. I got it. Observing the passage. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> you all right you all right you all right okay i'm making sure so that, keep that for reference but use that as you engage the text okay oh this is good thank you yes look i only, only give y'all good stuff i give y'all the best 
Yes, yes. Thank see, you. See, my, my, yes. Goal is, my goal is that you all be successful. I've already and I want to give you the... Ball. Okay, look at it. All right. Y'all on the ball. I you need you. I need you. I need to do with the woman with the well. Yes, sir. <laughs> but, now, got, but, now, but now what you can do in your spare time, you can revisit the woman at the well with the questions. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is good. Oh, my goodness. All right. So uh, I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm glad y'all happy. Uh, y'all happy, I'm happy. I'm going to ask uh, Prophetess uh, Davenport to pray us out. Yes, Okay, can y'all hear me? I'm sorry. I was yes. Okay. Oh, thank you, um, Reverend Moses. That was an awesome class. I really appreciate it. And I'm grateful to be here with everybody this evening. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Closing. Uh, Father God, we just come to you at this hour, Lord, giving you honor. Um, and just praise. Thank you for allowing us to be able to sit here in this class, Father God, and gain understanding and insight just on yes. in how to become better at studying your word, studying you, oh God, studying you and your movement and, and, and your, your, your verbiage and how you want us to be uh, moving and operating in excellence, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for just allowing our minds to be open, allowing us, Father God, we yield, Lord, and we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit so that we may gain understanding and insight, Father God. It's been an awesome, wonderful time. The classes are, are great, and you've designed and instructed each and every person to be here for a purpose, Father God. Just thank you, Lord. You came looking for us. Yes. In seeking us in our running and in our filthiness, you Thank still grab a hold of us. And so it is imperative and it's necessary that we are here. Even for some of us that may not quite understand it all, Father God, we trust and yield to your way. For we know that it is because of you, God, and what your assignment is and the mandate that you have placed on each and every one of us that yes. we are here to gain lessons and understanding in the teaching. Thank you, Father God, for, for sending the man of God, Overseer Mosley, to just, you placed him in a perfect position and used him, Father God, to be a direction and an instructor and an educator and a teacher to shed his knowledge and his understanding to help us go forth, God, and to be replicas of, of, of him, which you poured into him. He's sharing that with us. So we give honor and praise to you, Father God, but, and thank you for him. We thank you for his obedience, Father God, for accepting the assignment. He's a busy man, Father God, but he loves you with all his heart. So he yes. has a, and a willingness and a desire to do what you've called him to do because it is yes. about your kingdom. It's about your kingdom and using us, Father God, as vehicles and vessels to draw others. Into yes. So we just give you praise, God. We just give you honor. We thank you. We blow kisses to you to let you know that we love you with every ounce of our being and our heart, for it is only through you that we are able to be who and what we are today, that we have the breath of our lungs, that we are able to blink our eyes. So we say, Father God, thank you. We ask you to allow each of us to go on and to be able to complete our assignment, Father God, and take what we have learned here today for our assignment to read and record, Father God, and to like just, just take it and analyze and meditate. We thank yes. you, Father God, for equipping us with the strength to be able to do that. Yes. So right now, in Jesus' mighty, matchless name, and Jesus. remarkable name, we just say thank you, God. We give you praise, you, and glory. Yes. Everyone you. has a safe and blessed and wonderful weekend. We trust wholeheartedly in you, Father God, and we yield and surrender in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 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 Yes. 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 And also, too, I'm going to ask you when, when we get off, you know, text in our group text that how you enjoyed the class. So, so Bishop Elliott knows how we're doing. We're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. having a good time. Good time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you all have a good night. I'm about to go get me something to eat. I got to run. I got to run up to the church, too, to this movie night. So, okay. Okay. You all have a great Everybody night. Have a good night. Yeah, have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good weekend, guys. Next week. <laughs>